everyone and welcome to the BJ's Wholesale Club Holdings Inc. First quarter fiscal 2024 earnings conference call. My name is Candice and I will be coordinating your call today. After the speaker's remarks there will be a question and answer session. If you would like to ask a question please press start followed by one on your telephone keypad. I would now like to hand the conference call over to your host Kathy Park. Please go ahead. Good morning and welcome to BJ's first quarter fiscal 2024 earnings call. Joining me today are Bob Eddy, Chairman and Chief Executive Officer, Laura Felice, Chief Financial Officer, and Bill Werner, Executive Vice President, Strategy and Development. Please remember that during this call, we may make forward-looking statements within the meaning of the federal securities laws. These statements are based on our current expectations and involve risks and uncertainties that could cause actual results to differ materially from our expectations described on this call. Please see the risk factor sections of our most recent Form 10-K and Form 10-Q filed with the SEC for a description of those risks and uncertainties. Finally, please note that on today's call, we'll refer to certain non-GAAP financial measures that we believe will provide useful information for investors. The presentation of this information is not intended to be considered in isolation or as a substitute for the financial information presented in accordance with GAAP. Please refer to today's press release and latest investor presentation posted on our investor relations website for a reconciliation of these non-GAAP financial measures to the most comparable measures prepared in accordance with GAAP. And now I'll turn the call over to Bob. Good morning, everyone. Thanks for joining us today to discuss our first quarter results. The first quarter was marked by continued strong growth in membership fees and market share. We are also proud of the continued growth in comps. We expected the first quarter to be a tough lap given last year's inflation dynamics, so we are particularly proud of our continued momentum, underpinned by strong traffic and unit growth. Our team continues to manage the day-to-day -day well, while staying laser-focused on executing our long-term strategic priorities. Comparable club sales, excluding gas sales, grew by 0.6% in the first quarter. Our compelling value proposition, both in the club and at our gas stations, drove strong traffic, contributing three percentage points in the quarter, similar to our traffic trend in the fourth quarter of last year. Inflation was about flat, and we continued to grow unit volumes, with our perishables, grocery, and sundries division increasing comp units in the first quarter. Our members are rewarding us for our merchandising improvements and our amazing value. Consequently, we gained market share in both units and dollars in the quarter. Comp growth for our perishables growth, grocery and sundries division was up over 1% in the first quarter. We experienced the strongest growth in perishables, particularly in unit volumes, led by our fresh produce and dairy categories. Comp unit growth in grocery and sundries was equally impressive, especially when compared with declines in the broader marketplace. Our general merchandise business delivered a slightly negative comp in the first quarter as a handful of weather sensitive categories weighed on the overall division. We saw about a 10 point variance in GM comp performance across markets that experienced better weather versus markets with cooler and wetter weather compared to the prior year. Consumers remain discerning in their purchasing, and we have also found that members are increasingly waiting to shop higher ticket seasonal categories such as patio sets and air conditioners exactly when the weather turns, not in anticipation of it. When presented with great quality and value, members are spending. General merchandise is critical to our model, and we continue to make outstanding progress on our transformation efforts. We are intensely focused on delivering a new and exciting assortment that is presented and marketed in the right way at the right time and at the right price. Successful execution quarter after quarter is crucial to shifting member perception, and we believe we are delivering on this front. In fact, the categories that drove our general merchandise growth in last year's fourth quarter continued to showcase strength in the first quarter with consumer electronics and apparel both comping meaningfully positive. We're especially pleased with the performance of our home categories, which turned positive for the first time in a long time, with the segment comping nearly 7% in the first quarter. Home textiles led much of this growth. 
higher quality products such as our bath towels and sheets are resonating with our members. We've also elevated and enhanced the assortment in our kitchen and cleaning appliances, leaning into trend right items in higher growth categories designed to drive greater member demand. Members who engage in general merchandise exhibit trip and spend behaviors that highly correlate to membership renewal. Strengthening the treasure hunt and inspiring the general merchandise shop is a significant opportunity for the long-term growth of this company. I'm proud of the progress we're making and remain confident in our ability to realize the significant potential we see in this division. Our four strategic priorities remain critical to our long-term success. These priorities are improving member loyalty, giving our members an unbeatable shopping experience, delivering value conveniently, and growing our footprint. We are making significant progress in each of these areas. Our membership momentum continues to build, demonstrating the power of our growing value proposition and our 90% renewal rate. Member counts increased both year over year and sequentially. We are expanding membership in both new and existing markets with our digital platforms powering nearly half of this growth. We're improving membership quality as well. Our highest tier member base consists of our one plus members who pay a $110 fee and hold our co-brand credit card, which we believe is the best offering in retail today. As you know, these are our most loyal and highest spending members exhibiting the greatest lifetime value. This tier continues to grow double digits year over year, helping our higher tier membership penetration surpass 38% in the first quarter. As a testament to our ongoing success, in the first quarter we reported membership fee income growth of 8.6% year over year. We will remain focused on maintaining our strength in membership to drive long-term value for both our members and shareholders. A great shopping experience keeps our members coming back to shop with us, deepening their loyalty and driving higher renewals. This is why we continually strive to improve the member experience through merchandising, digital, and in-club conveniences, and of course, amazing value. We know our members choose where they do their weekly grocery shopping based on produce and meat. Members already love our assortment, as well as the differentiated amenities such as our full service deli. While we know they value the selection and quality of our meat, we knew we could do better in produce. Having full control over our perishable supply chain has been an enormous benefit, and we launched our Fresh 2.0 initiative last April, bringing even more freshness and excitement to our produce offering. Fresh 2.0 was built directly on insights and feedback from our members. We reassessed every step of our process, from sourcing to packaging to marketing. We then implemented robust training, giving our team members the knowledge and tools to maintain maximum freshness and quality of our produce. We invested in speeding up the supply chain in areas such as berries, resulting in faster and fresher arrivals at our clubs and ultimately into members' homes. We strengthened existing vendor relationships and also forged new ones to improve in stocks and introduce newer seasonally relevant products. We've already received great feedback on new offerings such as sumo mandarins and dragon fruit. Our comprehensive Fresh 2.0 pilot, which ran through much of last year, drove incremental member engagement in the category and yielded 6% more produce trips than our control clubs. In light of this success, we are scaling the program chain-wide this year with compelling displays and signage in club that help improve navigation and showcase our freshness quality, and value. This month, we began installing coolers at the front of our clubs so that our members are drawn in by this high-quality, low-priced produce in the first moments of their visit. We're amplifying this effort in our marketing with featured content and enticing promotions across all our channels. We believe the improvements we made in our fresh offering in the last year have delivered significant value to our members, contributing to our perishables performance and supporting our consistently strong traffic trends. In fact, our fresh produce categories delivered eight points of comp unit growth in the first quarter, outperforming the market. As we advance our Fresh 2.0 rollout this year, we will continue to work to win the shop, aiming to further solidify BJ's as our members' destination. We're innovating with our own brands, Wellesley Farms and Berkeley Jensen, to provide members with high-quality products at substantial value. 
Our own brand sales penetration continues to grow each quarter. Our sundries categories lead the way in areas such as paper and trash. In the first quarter, we launched our own food storage bags. This offering is a strong illustration of our capabilities and approach to own brands. Our research suggested our members were seeking greater value than the national brands offer. We underwent extensive benchmarking and analysis and identified a partner to help develop high quality products that were comparable to the leading national brand while offering a value of more than 30%. Our members response has exceeded our expectations, improving the category sales trend with more than half of the sales coming from new members to the category. Own brand sales make up over a quarter of our business and we're confident in our goal of reaching 30% in the future. Finally, gas is a traffic driver for us and a meaningful way in which we deliver value to our members. We gained share once again in the first quarter with comp gallons growing by approximately 6% year over year. This compares to the broader US market, which was down mid single digits in the same period. Our philosophy on gas, like the rest of our business, is grounded in delivering value. This mindset allows us to proactively offer extra savings to our members through gas promotions and our co-brand credit card, which we believe deepens member loyalty. We work hard to save our members time and money. For members, taking advantage of our value proposition is easier than ever, as our digital conveniences allow them to shop our clubs how they want. Our convenience initiatives include buy online pickup in club, curbside pickup, and same day delivery. In club shoppers can also leverage our digital coupon gallery and skip the lines with express pay checkout. Our digitally enabled sales have posted double digit growth in every quarter in the past two years. This is on top of meaningful growth through the pandemic. In fact, our digitally enabled comp sales in the first quarter were up 21% year over year. We're continuously refining and improving our user experience. In fact, this month we are rolling out the ability to locate products through our app, making shopping in our 100,000 square foot clubs a whole lot easier. This is one of the numerous enhancements enabled by our autonomous inventory robots, which is also driving labor efficiencies in our digital order fulfillment process. We will continue to lean into our digital capabilities to deliver even more value and convenience to our members in the future. Finally, we continue to make great progress on our real estate strategy. We opened our third club in the Nashville market in Goodlettsville earlier this year. We expect to open 11 more clubs in the back half of our fiscal year, including openings in new markets like Louisville, Knoxville, Southern Pines, and Myrtle Beach, while also expanding in our core markets with two openings in the New York metro market and four openings in Florida. In addition to our new unit expansion, we are investing into our existing footprint with upgraded signage as well as remodels as part of Fresh 2.0. We continue to move at an accelerated pace with our real estate initiatives and are building on our future pipeline, which remains at the highest levels in our company's history. As we assess the health of the consumer, members remain selective and incredibly value focused, which we believe bodes well for our business model. In a limited SKU environment, members rely on us to deliver a highly curated assortment that maximizes quality, value, and convenience. In doing so, we are driving great member engagement as exhibited by growth in trips, units, and market share in the first quarter, an achievement in today's challenging retail backdrop. We're driving greater trip frequency across all income levels that we track, high, mid, and low. Spend per shopper remains consistently strong with our mid to higher income members. While our low income members remain under pressure, particularly due to waning government aid, they continue to supplement their purchases with additional forms of tender, meaning they're spending more of their limited budget with us and not elsewhere. In fact, in the first quarter, overall sales from this member base started to grow again year over year after two consecutive quarters of declines. Looking ahead, we remain confident in our ability to grow the business, reinforced by healthy membership, traffic, and market share. These are key markers of the underlying strength of our company. Furthermore, we believe our operating model, deep focus on our strategic priorities, and unwavering dedication to delivering value keep us well positioned for long-term success. I'd like to close with my gratitude for our 34,000 team members. 
I'm impressed and inspired by their dedication to taking care of the families who depend on us every single day. To our team members listening in today, thank you for all of your hard work. I'll now turn it over to Laura to provide more details on our results and outlook for the year. Thank you, Bob. I'd like to join Bob in thanking our team members across our clubs, club support center, and distribution centers whose efforts contributed to another quarter of strong financial results. Let's dig into our results. Net sales in the quarter were approximately $4.8 billion, growing 4% over the prior year. Total comparable club sales in the first quarter, including gas sales, were up 1.6% year over year, led by gallons sold. Merchandise comp sales, which exclude gas sales, increased by 0.6% year-over-year and by 6.3% on a two-year stack. We are pleased to maintain traffic and unit growth in the quarter, which demonstrates our strong value prop, which continues to resonate with our members. As Bob mentioned, inflation was about flat for the quarter, with April inflecting slightly positive following several months of slight deflation. Our first quarter comp in our grocery, perishables, and sundries division grew by more than 1% year over year. We drove market share gains once again in this quarter, which supports our belief in a growing and loyal member base that relies on BJ's for its shopping needs. Our general merchandise and services division comp decreased by just under 5% for the first quarter, with general merchandise outperforming the rest of the divisions in this calculation. Digitally enabled comp sales for the first quarter grew 21% year over year and 40% on a two year stack. About 90% of our digital sales are fulfilled by our clubs with services like buy online, pick up in club and same day delivery, which remain meaningful drivers of our digital growth. Members who leverage our digital conveniences save time in their shopping and become more loyal members. This is a major win-win, and we will continue leaning into these mutually beneficial enhancements in the future. Membership fee income, or MFI, grew 8.6% to approximately $111.4 million in the first quarter, driven by broad break base strength in membership acquisition and retention across both new and existing clubs. In addition to our Goodlitzville club opening in the first quarter, we also continued to add new members from the five clubs that mostly opened late in the fourth quarter. We are pleased with our momentum in growing membership size and quality. Moving on to gross margins, excluding the gasoline business, our merchandise gross margin rate decreased by approximately 50 basis points year over year. As expected, we experienced some unfavorable lapping of our co-brand financial flows as we anniversary last year's launch, which led to the quarter year over year decline. Our first quarter merchandise gross margin rate remains higher than historical levels. SG&A expenses for the quarter were approximately $721.8 million. The year-over-year increase was primarily attributable to our new unit growth and other investments to drive our strategic priorities. As Bob mentioned earlier, we continue to gain share in our gas business with comp gallons growing by approximately 6% year-over-year. From a profitability perspective, the broader industry faced margin headwinds in the quarter, resulting in profits that fell below our expectations. We reported first quarter adjusted EBITDA of $236.4 million, which as a reminder, no longer includes pre-opening and non-cash rent expense addbacks. Our effective tax rate of 24.4% was primarily driven by higher than expected tax windfall. All in, our first quarter adjusted earnings per share of 85 cents were flat year over year and in line with our expectations. Moving on to our balance sheet, 
we feel good about our inventory position. Our team is working hard, improving our ability to have the right amount of product in the right clubs at the right time. We ended the first quarter with inventory about flat year over year, despite seven new clubs and approximately 180 basis points of improvement in our in-stock levels over the same period. Our capital allocation strategy is consistent with the framework we set forth a year ago at our investor day. We continue to believe that the best use of our cash is applying it towards profitably growing our business. As such, investments to support membership, merchandising, digital, and real estate initiatives will continue to be funded by our cash flows and enabled by our strong balance sheet. We ended the first quarter with 0.6 terms of net leverage, which aligns with our long-term target of sub one term. Returning excess cash to shareholders remains an important part of our capital allocation strategy as well. We repurchased approximately 405,000 shares for $30.2 million and as of the quarter end, we have approximately $159 million remaining under our current authorization. We will continue to take a disciplined and balanced approach to deploying our capital to maximize shareholder value. Turning to our outlook for the year, our guidance for the fiscal year remains unchanged. We continue to expect our fiscal 2024 comp sales, excluding gas, to range from 1% to 2%, getting closer to our long-term algorithm towards the back half of the year. We are still assuming a slightly inflationary year and a strong consumable business led by traffic, units, and market share. Despite external pressures beyond our control, we are pleased with our continued progress in general merchandise. We are proud of our achievements in membership. As we consider all of the elements that drive membership fee income, including the aforementioned timing of new club openings last year and the cadence of openings this year, we believe the year-over-year -year MFI increase of 8.6% in the first quarter will be the highest growth rate of the year. We continue to expect to deliver merchandise gross margin rate improvement of approximately 20 basis points for fiscal 2024, driven by strong cost management and continued growth in our own brands. We are planning for continued SG&A deleverage in fiscal 2024 as we invest in our growth initiatives, particularly in unit growth as new club sales continue to ramp over a multi-year period. A reminder that we are also lapping variable compensation tailwinds from fiscal 2023. Our expectations for gas remain unchanged. We are planning for an effective tax rate of approximately 28% for the remaining three quarters of the fiscal year. Putting all of this together, we continue to expect to deliver adjusted EPS in the $375 to $4 range. Longer term, we remain confident of the underlying strength of our business and believe we are well positioned to deliver sustainable growth to maximize shareholder value. With that, I'll turn it back to Bob for closing remarks. Thanks, Laura. We are celebrating the company's 40th anniversary this year. As I reflect on our history, we've taken a great business model and transformed it to be even better particularly over the past five years. Our purpose is clear and simple. We take care of the families who depend on us. This, combined with our strategic priorities, has built a strong foundation in the way we operate, leading to sustainable growth and value creation. We will grow the size and quality of our membership. We will offer unbeatable member experience through our merchandising improvements. We will elevate our digital conveniences to save our members money and time and we will profitably grow our footprint and strengthen our brand. Above all, we will always deliver compelling value to our members. I'm proud of our entire team and I'm excited for our future.
Thanks again for joining us today and for your support of BJ's Wholesale Club. I'll now turn it back over to the operator to take your questions. Thank you. We will now start our Q&A session. If you'd like to register a question, please press star followed by one on your telephone keypad, ensuring you are unmuted locally. If you'd like to withdraw your question, you can do so at any time by pressing star followed by two. In the fairness to all participants, please limit your questions to one question and one follow-up. The first question comes from the line of Peter Benedict of Baird. Your line is open. Please go ahead. Oh, hey guys. Good morning. Um, thanks for, for taking the question. First, just on the on the MFI growth, obviously very impressive there. Um, recognize it'll at 8.6 is probably the, the, the fastest growth rate. But as as we look out through the balance of the year, just um, any reason why the dollar number would step down sequentially, um, or should we expect it to continue to grow a little bit? Um, and 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 curious, kind of how the the robust performance influences your willingness to uh, consider a fee increase at some point this year? That's my first question. Uh, thanks, Pete. Morning. Uh, took the first question to get to the fee increase, huh? Uh, <laughs> uh, look, I think we had a great quarter from a, a membership perspective. The team's doing uh, pretty impressive things, signing up new members and um, renewing members, getting them up through the premium tiers. The, our field folks have been doing a fantastic job at interacting with our members. Uh, we're engaging them nicely as well. So uh, I think we've got a lot to be proud of there. As as we said in the prepared remarks, uh, 8.6 was was pretty high, and we don't expect that to recur. Uh, you know, most most of that increment over our previous trend was just the way the spacing of the clubs last year fell, and how that uh, falls into this year. Uh, but with that said, we are slightly ahead of uh, last year's trend, X that, uh, and, and slightly ahead of our own plan. So we're, we're pretty pleased with with, uh, with what we're doing and, uh, and where we're going from a membership uh, fee perspective. Um, as to the fee increase, we haven't uh, really given a whole bunch of thought to it at this point. And so, um, you know, when there's news to share, we'll definitely, we'll definitely share it. Gotcha. Fair enough. So uh, my follow-up is on, Kind of on inventory and, and, and merch margins. Inventory looked really clean. I'm um, just curious, kind of your your progress there. What what maybe you've you've done to kind of get that uh, that in line? Um, and what does that mean for for kind of the merch margin path from here? Down 50 basis points in the first quarter. You're saying plus 20 for the year. Um, maybe just help us understand um, uh, maybe the cadence in 2Q and then versus the second half. Thank you. Sure. Yeah, look, we're we're pretty happy with where our, our inventories are at this point. Uh, you know, the team's been doing a bunch of work. Uh, we, we frankly weren't happy with our inventory levels last year, particularly from an in-stock perspective. And so, uh, you know, the team's done a bunch of work to raise our in-stocks, uh, you know, which are significantly higher today than they were a year ago today, and to find ways to uh, offset those increases in inventory levels. Uh, by reducing uh, reducing inventory that, that frankly we, we don't need uh, not inventory that's going to go bad but just uh, a more efficient way to present and uh, and move inventory around uh, so I think we're, we've got continued uh, upside there we should be able to raise the in stocks even further uh, and continue to rationalize the inventory base as well obviously we've got uh, new clubs coming into the uh, to the portfolio that drives inventory up as, uh, a little bit so uh, we're pretty pleased with where we landed for the end of the quarter. Uh, and maybe I'll let Laura uh, tackle the, the margin question. Yeah, hey, hey, good morning. Um, on on merch margins, I, you know, it is um, as we expected um, when we guided for Q1, when we gave a little bit of color on it, um, largely what happened in Q1 was um, the transition of our co-brand portfolio last year and lapping that. Um, so we continue to expect that that was a Q1 event only um, and will not drag margins down as we progress through the remainder of the year. Got it. Thanks so much, guys. Good luck. Thanks, Pete. The next question comes from the line of Kate. McShane of Goldman Sachs. Your line is now open. Please go ahead. Hi, good morning. Thanks for taking our question. 
Um, last quarter we had asked you about the promotional environment and, and pricing, and I think the answer at the time was maybe the environment was a little bit more promotional, but how are you thinking about it now, especially in the context of pricing actions taken by a competitor and rollbacks from another? I know you have your competitive price gap, but how are you thinking about that right now? Hey, Kate, good morning. Thanks thanks for the question. Certainly a relevant one. Uh, and, you know, I guess what I would say is uh, others are searching for value, and that's uh, what we in the Club Channel provide every every day of the week. So, uh, you know, there's there's a lot of, uh, of space between us and some of our competitors out there. So uh, I'm not sure that uh, we spend a lot of time thinking about uh, what's been in the news lately. We spend a lot of time, obviously, thinking about how we can provide uh, better value uh, to our members every single day, whether that's uh, through pricing, whether it's through promotions, whether it's through the, the co-brand credit card, uh, all sorts of different things rolling into, uh, I think, a, a pretty fantastic value proposition for our members. And so we'll just keep sticking to our knitting and, and uh, making sure we're uh, providing the right the right day-to-day -day shelf value and, and promotional values uh, as we go. The next question comes from the line of Simeon Gutsman of Morgan Stanley. Your line is now open. Please go ahead. Good morning, everyone. Um, I want to follow up on the MFI. The, um, the spread in MFI growth versus club growth, I think it's been the highest in quite some time. So can you talk about why it was so good in the quarter and then why should it step down from here? Um, and I guess, you know, you, you'll be opening more clubs, I guess, throughout the year. So just thinking about the timing and why that was so strong. Yeah, good morning, Simeon. Thanks for the question. Um, you know, it really has to do with the fact that we opened uh, several clubs right around the end of the fiscal year. And so we, we didn't, we had signed up a bunch of members in those clubs and didn't recognize any membership fees uh, really until the, the first quarter here. And so... There, there is that artificial bump. You're absolutely right that as we uh, open more clubs in the end of this year, we've got uh, a bunch in Q3 and a lot in Q4, and that should serve as a uh, as an upward force on, on membership fees. Uh, but uh, but really, the Q1 uh, number should should be the highest. As I said earlier, we're very proud of what we're doing. Uh, we are definitely ahead of our our plans. Uh, but I, as we sit here and look at the rest of the year, uh, you know, our, our plan doesn't doesn't start with an eight. Uh, we'll put it that way, and uh, uh, and it's you know sort of slightly ahead of where we where we ended last year uh, for from a full year uh, MFI perspective. Uh, but with, you know, with all that said, we're 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 very pleased. Uh, you know, members continue to come in. Uh, uh, prospective members uh, continue to come in. They're reacting to our uh, our communications and promotions uh, for membership, and uh, you know, team's doing a fantastic job engaging them when they do uh, uh, interact with us and uh, selling them the appropriate membership for them, and uh, you know, turning them into good members over time. So we're, we're very uh, very pleased with the progress we're making there. And can you, can you share any insight if you take new members that had never been to BJ's before and look across the spend, what they're spending on across categories, and you compare it to an existing member, are you able to see the traction you're making in some of, um, I guess, the non-food items in that spend, or they typically start with the grocery, food, and then you get them into the other categories? Um, look, I think uh, I think there are – two different trip missions when you come to BJ's. One's a grocery trip and one's a general merchandise trip. And we've talked a lot about the fact that we run a fantastic grocery business. That, that uh, That's, I, I think, indisputable. We are uh, doing a great job meeting our members' needs for their day-to-day -day grocery purchases. And we have a tremendous opportunity in expanding uh, general merchandise. I think we've done it in uh, we've had great credibility in general merchandise in certain categories like consumer electronics for, for a long time. And our aim is really to uh, expand that credibility into other categories. And we talked about the fantastic Q4 results in CE and, and apparel, really apparel all year long last year. 
the, the momentum there has continued in those two categories. Uh, we talked about our home business uh, coming alive for the first time in a long time. That's uh, you know three out of the the, the, the four big ones. Uh, we've got to get the seasonal business going. I, I think that's largely uh, weather related at this point, and uh, we're finally getting some warm weather here in the Northeast. So we should uh, we should have a good read on that. Uh, very soon. With with that said, uh, we're pleased with the, the progress we're making in, in GM to sort of build on the success of the food business. As we look at member spending levels, as we talked about in the prepared remarks, they are increasing, and, uh, and so it looks like you know we're we're going in the in the right direction uh, as we as we continue to attract new members and, and bring them into the fold. Okay. Thank you very much. The next question comes from the line of Robbie Omez of Bank of America. Your line is now open. Please go ahead. Oh, hey, Bob. Hey, Laura. Um, my, uh, you know, I'll give you my two questions up front. Um, the, uh, can you, Bob, can you talk about the new market clubs and, uh, you know, how those are doing, you know, versus your expectations? And if there are differences between the more recently opened clubs, you know, some better than others, what, what the reason uh, you're finding, you know, that is? Uh, and then the second question is just the um, the coolers in front of clubs. Um, I probably had missed that. You know, you talking about that before. Can you just remind me? You know what? Um, you know what you're doing there, and what kind of driver that is. Uh, you know, to to comps. Yeah, sure. Uh, why don't we take them in reverse order? The the coolers are a part of our fresh 2.0 effort. We talked a lot about that in our prepared remarks today. We spent, uh, you know, most of last year testing in Florida how to make our produce assortment uh, better and uh, how to make members react to it better. And you know, we learned a lot. We we uh, we were, I think, good at produce, but not great. And Fresh 2.0 really has put a a, a light on ways to improve. And uh, you know, it was, it was all across the board as we as we talked about. Uh, you know, we have really changed our uh, sourcing methodology a bit. We've changed our assortment. We've we've changed the way that product flows through our system to get it here faster. Uh, we've changed our marketing. We've changed signage in the clubs, and then we've put these coolers in, um, really as sort of a signpost to get people thinking about it. Uh, you know, get people to understand uh, that that uh, you know they should be buying produce from us. We t we tend to put things in that cooler that are. Uh, you know, uh, uh, right from a, a timing perspective, they are uh, priced right. They're fresh. Uh, they are at the right time of year, and uh, and it's been a it's been a big win. I wouldn't I wouldn't say it's been a tremendous driver to comps, but it, it is certainly raising the uh, uh, the visibility of our produce uh, to our members, and we've seen gains across the, the the produce business as a result of not just the coolers, but the entire Fresh 2.0 effort. Uh, you know, we need to make sure that we're giving our members the freshest produce uh, because they're buying it in bigger quantities than they would at a, at a grocery store. So uh, we, we need to give them more days of freshness, uh, give it to them in the right pack sizes, give it to them at the right price. Uh, and, uh, you know, Fresh 2.0 is really aimed at all of that. And, and the early returns are, are, are pretty favorable. So we've got a lot of room to run. We haven't rolled it out through the entire chain yet. Uh, we need to keep keep pushing on it. Uh, but uh, our members are telling us they like what they see, and uh, they're certainly buying more produce uh, in the clubs that uh, have undergone this transformation. Uh, so we'll keep pushing there. Uh, from a real estate perspective, Bill and the team have been doing a great job uh, getting more clubs into the pipeline. We said we, it's the biggest pipeline we've ever had. That's true by a long shot. We've got a fantastic slate for this year. Uh, back end weighted, as, as I said earlier, a uh, good slate for next year as well. Uh, I, I guess I would tell you all of our new clubs, uh, really since we started opening new clubs again several years ago, have done well, and uh, they've met or exceeded their their underwriting. Uh, you know, we are uh, learning how to interact with new members in these new clubs, learning how to tell our story in new markets. Uh, learning how to really run a new club in an efficient and effective fashion. Uh, but the, the returns across the portfolio have been, have been great. And, 
you know, that's why we've got our, our foot uh, hard on the gas pedal at this point. Uh, you want to add anything, Bill? No, I, I would just add, Robbie, that last year was a you know big year for us with entry into the Nashville market, um, entry into our 20th state in Alabama and in, in Madison. Um, and we've seen a really good response to our membership, um, you know, in those markets. And as we look forward to this year, um, it's continued expansion. Um, we'll continue our growth in Tennessee, um, you know, moving into the Knoxville market with a new club in Maryville that we just announced. And then also um, great expansion throughout our core. Um, a lot of growth down in Florida. We talked about a couple of cl clubs in our, um, you know, our key New York metro market, including our first club on Staten Island. Um, so as we look, you know, out, you know, Bob mentioned our, our pipeline. We talked about it being the most robust in the company's history at Q4. Um, you know, we've grown it by the pipeline, but by a bunch of units here in Q1. So it's now even deeper, and uh, you know, we continue to see great results, and we're going to continue to lean in. That sounds Robbie, great. Thank you. Oh yeah, sorry, Laura. That's okay. I was just going to um, jump onto the, the the cooler um, comments and and just a reminder: all of that um, work that we're doing on Fresh 2.0, um, including the coolers and the, the comments Bob already made, um, started with our acquisition of Burris. Um, and so this is this is something we've been working on for a while. Um, and so, so we're just starting to see um, it all kind of coming to the market and, and really um, showing our members what that supply chain um, and acquiring that did for the company. Sounds great. Thank you. The next question comes from the line of Chuck Grome of Gordon Husket. Your line is now open. Please go ahead. Hey, thanks a lot. Good morning. Um, Bob, can you talk a little bit more about general merchandise? Um, you sound really good on CE apparel, um, but there's obviously other parts of the business that need to pick up um, the slack a little bit. And I, I noticed that the, the, the overall category, including services, was down 5%. So I guess what's going on in services that, that's weighing on, on the category? Thanks. Look, Chuck, good morning. Uh, you, you've got a few things in there. You've got sort of core GM, you've got services, and you've got uh, what we call ancillary or other. Uh, that's where the, the co-brand accounting flies through. So that's uh, sort of the biggest, uh, you know, drag to make the division negative. Uh, services was slightly negative. Uh, we're still pleased with the way the business is working. There's some timing going on through there. Uh, we would expect services to be fine in Q2. Uh, and GM was, was very slightly negative uh, for GM as we talked about, uh, really strong results in CE and apparel, continuing that trend, uh, the home business doing really well, members reacting to a, a, a new assortment there. That's been really the key uh, in, in a lot of these categories, right? Making sure, we talked about this, making sure we have the right stuff on the shelves, making sure it's on trend, making sure it's at the right quality, uh, making sure the value is correct, uh, and, uh, and and making sure it's simple, quite honestly. I mean, part of the... the uh, the magic here in apparel is is uh, reducing the number of brands, reducing the number of uh, you know colorways in a particular SKU, so that the member can easily shop it and understand uh, what we're doing. Uh, so we were delighted to see the home business come alive. Uh, that that was uh, one that we thought was uh, going to be harder to fix, and, and we are by no means done. But certainly the stuff that we have. Uh, Done in that in that category so far have have resonated with our members, uh, and you know seasonal uh, this quarter is is very highly weighted. Uh, you know as we get into this summer seasonal uh, time of year, it becomes such a big part of our business that uh, you know the cruddy weather in the Northeast really had uh, had a pretty ugly impact on that category, and uh, because it's so big on the the overall calculation for Core GM. Uh, uh, but as I talked about in the prepared remarks, uh, in, the, in their southeast clubs, or actually all, all of those clubs uh, with warmer weather, uh, we saw a 10-point differential uh, positive, uh, you know, comps from, from north to south. So, uh, you know, we're pretty confident that as the weather starts to turn here, that uh, you know that stuff will will turn on, and uh, you know we'll we'll get back to positive comps in GM uh, in the second quarter. 
Okay, that's great to hear. Um, and then, Laura, just on the on the core gross margins down 50, it sounds like that was all Capital One related. So as we look ahead to 2Q through the balance of the year, can you talk about the the drivers of the the upside on the gross margin line, and, and if you could tie in um, your CMP work, skew rationalization, um, and other efforts that that help you get there? Thanks. Yeah. Hey. Good morning, Chuck. Um, look, I think you got part of the answer there. So um, two things I would say, right? We think uh, 20 bips for the full year is is still a good number. Um, how does that come? That comes from the work we started doing um, and talked about at year end uh, with CMP. So that's really looking um, across categories at um, assortment and making sure we have the right value, the right assortment on the shelves um, to deliver that to our members. So a little bit from that. Um, and then we continue to work on our own brand efforts. Um, and so um, we're really happy with the progress we've made there. Um, you know, longer term, we continue to think that 30% penetration is in sight. Um, and so some of that gross margin expansion will come from the work we continue on that. Um, in the prepared remarks, we talked a little bit about storage bags, trash, um, and paper that continues to do really well for us. Um, and that's what gives us um, excitement about the remainder of the year and, and as we continue to progress on those efforts. Great. Thank you. The next question comes from the line of Greg Malish of Evercore ISI. Your line is now open. Please go ahead. Hi, thanks. Um, it, it sounds like gas profits came down in the quarter. Uh, is that alleviated, or could you update us on where we are penny profit? Yeah, good morning, Greg. Certainly it was a tougher quarter from a profitability perspective in, in gas. Uh, despite uh, pretty significant gallon growth and market share growth, we're you know very proud of our members continuing to react to our great value every day uh, in that segment of our business, being up six uh, on top of a big number last quarter, uh, sorry last year at the same time. Uh, we've been growing market share for a couple of years there now in leaps and bounds, so uh, we'll we'll take that all day long. Uh, as, as you know, uh, we uh, typically sell out of gas every day, and so in a rising cost environment like we saw in Q1, uh, we are constantly putting more and more expensive gas in the ground uh, versus our sort of normal everyday competitors who sell far less volume than we do. Uh, so it compresses margin in rising cost environments. So that's exactly what we saw in the first quarter as, as uh, oil and gasoline costs rose uh, pretty precipitously given what's going on in the world. Uh, you know, that has uh, gotten a bit better here in, in Q2 so far. And so um, well, Q1 was below our plan uh, by, call it a couple million dollars, a few million dollars. Uh, uh, Q2 is, so far is, is better. Gas is impossible to predict. Uh, we don't try and do it quarter by quarter. We, we can tell you uh, with reasonable certainty uh, a, a year. And uh, as we sit here today, uh, our plan for the year is, is still uh, a, a good one. We have not changed it. We're still confident we can continue to grow the business. We, we're still confident we can continue to grow the interaction of our gas business with our core business and get folks uh, from the pumps into our clubs. And we're still confident that uh, it's, it's a profitable part of our business and, and we'll, drive, uh, you know, we'll drive our bottom line as well. Uh, that's great, Bob. I guess the, the, my follow-up would be uh, back on on margins. Uh, I think Laura, you you said the gross merch margin from the credit card changeover was mostly, but not all, down because of that. Could you help unpack the rest of the credit card changeover and how that's impacting the top line margin SGNA? Yeah. Um, good morning. So um, you're right. What what the um, depression of the Q1 March margin rate was was largely driven by um, lapping of co-brand. Um, there is a component of it that is dragging down comp in the first quarter slightly. Um, 
as I said before, that dissipates as we go into the remainder of the year. So, um, you know, as we look at Q2, Q3, and Q4, we expect um, that there won't be any disruption from the lapping of, of co-brand, um, and it will be really core business, March margins. Um, again, like I, like I already talked about, um, we expect that those will grow over the, the course of the year, about 20 bips, um, largely from our CMP efforts um, and own brand penetration and all the great work that our merchants are doing, um, thinking about value and assortment that we offer to our members every day. And just as a reminder, last year that switch was the, the, the impact this year, I think, is roughly a third of what it was last year, at least on the top line. I have that in my notes somewhere, but I want to make sure I got it right. Um, so the transition was last year, first quarter. Um, I don't know that that we quantified the number, but um, again, we'll, we'll kind of lap it, and it's a non-event for the remainder of the year. It laps and then it comes down. All right, that's great. Th thanks and good luck. Thanks. thanks. The next question comes from the line of Mike Baker of D.A. Davidson. Your line is so open. Please go ahead. Hi, Mike. Your line is open. Please check you're not on mute. My bad. Um, can you – I'll ask the uh, sort of monthly cadence question. Can you talk about your trends throughout the quarter? Uh, as the weather gets better here in the Northeast, does that business uh, – is, is, do you lose that business when it wasn't, you know, when the weather was bad, or does that business come back? And then uh, follow up, I'll, I'll ask up front. Uh, the, the dumb math suggests comps get better as we go through the year because comparisons are easier, and you talked about some things like that co-branded credit card uh, pressure going away. Is, is that a correct assumption that comps should get better throughout the year? Thanks. Yeah, good morning, Mike. Uh, you are uh, you're pretty correct. Uh, comps will get better throughout the year. Uh, that's the way we planned it. Part of it is the uh, the core brand rolling away. Part of it is easier laps. Part of it's progress, frankly, as we build a better uh, business through things like Fresh 2.0 and, and general merchandise and uh, signing up more more members. So, you know, as we talked about uh, uh, as we talked about, uh, you know, we should get. Uh, Towards our long-term algo, uh, at, you know, sort of at the end of the year, we're uh, sort of we knew we knew this quarter would be a would be a dogfight, lapping 10 points of inflation, and uh, that's certainly certainly true. We we uh, our, our 0.6 comp was a bit better than our plan, so we were uh, we were happy with that, and uh, and I, I would imagine we we see some progress from here as the as the year plays out. Uh, uh, I forget the oh, monthly cadence. Uh, you know, I mean, there, were, there weren't huge differences. I will tell you, uh, uh, March was lower than February and, and April. I think that's no surprise given uh, what, what we've all heard from everybody else who's reported. Uh, you know, ours was 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 definitely in that same uh, same place. Uh, as we look at the the GM business. Uh, you know, I don't want to belabor it. But we do think it's it's weather sensitive categories that have driven it down. Um, I, it's still very early in the summer seasonal year, so I don't think we've really lost any sales. Um, I just think people wait it. Uh, they wait until you know it's not 50 and raining, and uh, there's no no need to buy a patio set when it's when it's raining outside. So, uh, I do expect we'll see that that business pick up in the second quarter, and uh, you know. This week, uh, this week's been nice in Boston. So hopefully, uh, hopefully May is a, uh, we'll, we'll end it on a strong note. Yeah, I uh, appreciate that. Thank you. All right, Mike. Thanks. The next question comes from the line of Edward Kelly of Wells Fargo. Your line is open. Please go ahead. Yeah. Hi. Good morning, guys. Um, hey. I wanted to start. Uh, just first, the clarification um, around around membership fee growth this year, Bob. I think you mentioned that um, you expected maybe be a little bit above 
you know, sort of last year when all is sort of said and done. But is that the exit rate that you're talking about? Is that full year? I'm just I'm just trying to get a better gauge of like the step down from Q1 there. Yeah. Good morning, Ed. Uh, thanks for the question. I, I was giving you uh, commentary on the full year rate. So, uh, you know, we were we were six and change for the full year last year. Uh, we are uh, slightly north of that. Mm -hmm. Uh, in our current version of the plan, uh, you know, but below below the Q1 number. Got it. Okay. And then um, second question for you uh, around income cohorts. I I think I heard you say on the call that the that your lower income cohort um, was positive, better than it's been, you know, kind of in a while. Um, that's not something I think we're hearing sort of elsewhere. Um, can you just talk a bit more about what you're seeing from that customer? Is that lapping a snap? Or are you seeing expensive share gain? Just curious as to, as to what you're seeing there. Thank you. Yeah, look, I think we're seeing share gain there. Um, you know, uh, we, we've talked about a couple of things over time. Uh, those folks have always been very sensitive to uh, the direction of, of uh, government benefits. Uh, when they got more, their spending would go up. When they uh, got less, their spending would go down. Uh, that's largely not been the case with us in the last year or so. Uh, they have been uh, spending more of their non-government uh, benefit wallet with us, uh, which we have frankly had never seen before last year. So uh, that tells me we've convinced them that uh, we, are, we are a destination for them. We can provide them the right value. And uh, you know they they need the value uh, more than anybody else. Uh, so we're particularly pleased uh, after a couple quarters of total spending in that cohort going down that uh, you know that that spending has turned back around to be slightly positive. Uh, I don't think it's a, a huge source of of growth given the number of dollars in their wallet. Just to just to be fair about it, but uh, we're very pleased that uh, they continue to come to see us. Their trips are are holding in there nicely. They're putting the right stuff in their basket and uh, and hopefully they uh, they continue to do that. We're very pleased with their, their behavior so far. Great, thank you. Good. The next question comes from the line of Chuck Charanowski of North Coast Research. Your line's now open, please go ahead. Good morning, everyone. Um, Bob and Laura, if you go back to the uh, gross margin line again, you talked about units improvement. Are, does that reflect uh, uh, an increased number of clubs as well as uh, average lower retail per item purchased? Uh, hi, Chuck. When we when we talk about units, it's comp units, right? So uh, units in our in our comp base. So new clubs would would be excluded. Uh, it's really a good measure of, uh, you know, what our what our member base is, is thinking about. They're certainly, uh, you know, looking for value at this point, uh, and, uh, and they're coming to see us. So I, I think it's a good mark of uh, share of wallet. You know, how much we're picking up there. Uh, you know, we certainly have a tough tough lap uh, from from an inflation perspective, and so if that. Uh, Gain and share continues, uh, and the inflation lap wanes. Uh, I would I would expect uh, comps to grow from here. So we're, we're we're pleased with the with the unit behavior and frankly the traffic. I mean, to be running three points of traffic quarter on quarter is uh, is, is a fantastic uh, uh, you know look at the momentum we have in the business. And and when you're talking about uh, own brands business, uh, can you quantify what kind of the pickup in that? What uh, impact that had on the uh, comps, sales comps, simply because uh, the merchandise is uh, priced lower? Yeah, look, it, it's usually a drag on comps. Uh, uh, certainly, there are uh, cases where members are getting into a new category for the first time. We talked about that in the prepared remarks with our, uh, our food storage bags. Uh, but a lot of uh, a lot of the own brand increase is just switching from brands, given they tend to be 30% cheaper. Uh, so just just remember, uh, you know that that 
calculus, right? 30% cheaper than the brand. And they're about a thousand basis points more accretive to us from a margin perspective. So, uh, you know, for every, uh, every percentage point of growth tends to be a little bit, uh, a little bit of a comp headwind, but it tends to give us 10 bips of, uh, of margin rate growth as well. So, uh, you know, you're not, you're not going to see the own brand business really in the comp all that much. You're going to see it in margin. You're going to see it in, uh, repeat shopping, renewal rate, uh, member satisfaction, that kind of thing. Thank you. Good luck for the rest of the year. Thanks, Chuck. This now concludes our, C, uh, our Q and A session. So I'd like to hand the conference back over to Bob Eddy, Chairman and CEO, for closing remarks. Great. Thank you. Uh, thanks. Thanks for your time this morning, everybody. We're, we uh, are very proud of the results we reported to you this morning, and uh, we've got tremendous confidence in our business going forward. So uh, I wish you all a, a, a great summer, and we will uh, we'll talk to you at the end of the second quarter. Thanks so much. This concludes today's conference. You may now disconnect your lines.